There's a strange thing that happens to preachers, and it doesn't matter who the preacher is, what denomination, what variety, male, female, old, young, it, it, it really doesn't matter. You can ask any of the clergy that are here together today, it happens to all of us. We will have a lesson that we have prepared, we will have something that we teach and preach, we'll have a logical argument that flows one point to the next, we'll have it all figured out, we'll even have a thesis statement that we might repeat five, six, ten times. We'll have it all set up in such a way that we're pretty convinced that what we're teaching is what we're teaching and this is how it's going to work. And then you'll go to the back of the room and you'll shake hands and someone will come up to you and you'll preach on, say, God loves all of us. And someone in the back of the room will tell you, I love the NRA. Thanks for reminding me of that. <laughs> and you'll literally have no idea where they got that, where it came from, or how it got through the system. But it'll be in there anyways. People will have heard it and are convinced that you said it. It's a weird, strange thing, but it happens all the time. Today is one of those days where if you even vaguely listen to the gospel lesson, there are already things bouncing around your head. When we are told to love our enemies, to go the extra mile for our enemies, to pray for the welfare of our enemies, all sorts of stuff starts bouncing around before any priest says a cotton-picking word. So let me go ahead and just cut to the chase. Yes, you have to love President Trump. Yes, you have to love Hillary Clinton. Yes, you have to love both political parties and all the things that are in our ether right now. We're called to love both. But here's the real trick. We got to really talk about what it means to love because that's where everybody gets hung up. They get confused on what it means to love. There's really two ways that scholars even get caught up in this system with it. That is, on one hand, they will say, Jesus tells us to love our enemies and to be perfect as our heavenly Father is perfect. Well, that's impossible. None of us can be perfect. We can't do it all. We can't figure this all out. So it's really, this whole thing is just to remind us that we need to depend on God. That's one way people sort of talk about this idea of love, that it's just too darn hard to do, so we just need to relax and, and do what we can do, but realize we're not going to get there. That's not what Jesus says. That's not the way it works. Sorry. The other, the other side of it is this idea that people have promoted for a long time, that this is sort of a spiritual jujitsu way of getting what you want. If I love my enemy, if I hug on them enough and care for them, well, then they're eventually going to agree with me and I get my way. That's the other way people tend to talk about a lot of this. And they'll talk about sort of nonviolent peace movements and say, this is what we really need to do. This is how we'll get everything fixed in short order. If we just love on our enemies, it'll all work out and I get to win. That's not it either, actually. It's sort of the idea of that's really much like the old Irish prayer that says, Lord, I pray for my enemies that you might turn their hearts to agree with me. And if you can't turn their hearts, Lord, then turn their ankles so I'll know them by their limping. <laughs> that's, not, that's not it. That's not the point. Jesus has a much harder lesson for us and a much more direct. That is, he literally gives us the idea of what we're supposed to do. If someone asks you for something, then you give it to them, whether they're begging or taking. If someone strikes you, then you turn the other cheek. It, it's a way of loving and caring for them and realizing you aren't going to get a cotton-picking thing back. Said differently, the idea is that we are called to remember that everyone is made in God's image. Everyone is worthy of love in God's eyes. If we are to love like our Heavenly Father loves, then that means to look at someone and say, I don't understand what they're doing, but I know that I'm supposed to care about them and love them. I don't necessarily have to agree with what they're doing, 
In fact, that is not at all what Jesus says. Love does not equal agreement. Love means to recognize that people have an inherent value. In just a few minutes, we'll baptize two new wonderful children into the church, welcome their families and their friends, and we're glad that you're all here. And in our prayers, we actually say this. As we renew our baptismal covenant, we'll be reminded to see Christ in every human being. We'll be reminded in those prayers explicitly to care for the dignity of every human being. And that means action. Jesus is clear, this is not some warm feeling kind of idea. I just like how that person is and they're so nice. No. Jesus is clear, this is action oriented. If you disagree with something that's going on, you can say, I believe that person's doing what they believe to be the best thing that they can do. I can also believe that what they're doing is wrong and therefore I will go out and try and care for the people that I believe are being hurt by it. That's the exact model that Jesus advocates. It's not passive, it is not relaxed, it is hard to do this kind of work. It is hard to be involved in love at this level because it means I have to recognize that every single person, especially the ones I don't like, are made in God's image. And I also have to realize that sometimes I may not have it all figured out and know what's happening. When Jesus says to love our enemies, it's to realize both are true at the same time, and we got to do something about it. It's why at the end of the day, we come together as a community to realize that we have to do it together, that there are days when you might have it all figured out, or for me, there's just days that I'm glad Hunter's in charge of mission and outreach and can go to do this work. <laughs> it's sort of a joke, but it's also sort of true. The whole point of the community is to come together and realize that we are called to love each other and do the hard work together. That we are called to be ultimately the salt of the earth. That is to be something completely different. Because let's be honest, in our current political environment, to say that I love every single person on Capitol Hill is a radical and utterly insane thing to say to a certain degree. But it's what it is to be a Christian, to be something that's different. Salt is not just flavorful, it's also can be pretty corrosive. It can also be pretty gritty and rub up against things. It's not comfortable when you got salt in your bathing suit. Oh, come on, that was a halfway decent joke. <laughs> Golly. But that's the reality of what it is to be a Christian, to recognize that we have a hard work to do, that we have something different to say to the world, something incredibly different, that we are called to say all of these people are made in God's image and I love every one of them, even if I don't agree with everything they do. It's what we are baptizing these children into today and to being something different and wonderful and sacred in this world to remind each other that we have ultimately more in common than we have different to be God's love, and to remind all that we're called to love everyone as God loves us, as God's children. Amen.